any shim layer below IP, MPLS, or above IP, UDP, VXLAN, IP is able to build any service, thanks to SRV6 microsegment. IP is able to measure any service, thanks to IPM, Integrated Performance Measurements. Let's review uh, microsegment first. I'm going to use a typical deployment as documented publicly by Swisscom, Rakuten, or Bell. Uh, I see on the, the slide that you tell me 15 minutes. The organization team told me 30 minutes. So uh, uh, the, 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 the content is for 30 minutes. Okay, so the design that I go over is uh, the, the one typical of uh, Swisscom, Rakuten, uh, Bell, etc. So. Let me take an example. You want to uh, provide a VPN with underlay TE differentiation, mean latency instead of the best effort path. The packet from the VPN client is going to reach the ingress PE number one, where uh, we're going to encapsulate it into an other IPv6 header. Without any segment routing extension header, just an other IPv6 header. And in the destination address, there is the magic. This is the network programming that is built with up to six micro instructions. And this is what I'm going to explain here. Once the program is executed, the packet will reach the egress PE number two, where he will pop the other IPv6 header and he will release the inner packet. The inner packet can be IPv4, IPv6, Ethernet, TDM, what, whatever you wish. How do we build this? First, you operate an IGP with two algorithms, ISIS or OSPF. The base algorithm is using metrics that uh, track the low cost path, the best effort service. To this, we add an algorithm which we call Flex Algo. It's now very widespread. We invented this in 2015. This Flex Algo 128 is uh, tracking, computing the shortest path according to min latency. So, within the domain, from any node, for example, one, to any node, for example, node number two, your IGP automatically compute two shortest paths, the black path min cost to two, and the min latency path red to two. We advise, and all of the deployments use private IPv6 address space, but if you want to use public space, it's also possible. We advise to allocate one 32-bit private block per algorithm. To make it easy and memorize easily, you can use FD 0000, and then what is important is the last nibble in this illustration. If the last nibble is zero, then it means that your slash 32 blocks in the private space is allocated to the min cost path, the best effort path. This is an easy way to memorize because in ISIS OSPF, the base algorithm is known as algorithm zero, hence the last nibble of the block. Typically, to do the flex algo for low latency, we use flex algo 128. And so, once again, you can do differently, but to memorize easy, you put the last nibble to 8, and then you know that when you see a packet in flight within your domain, if the last nibble of the block in 32 bit is 8 that you see there, then it means it is going according to the min latency path to the destination. The next step in the design is to allocate microsegments. The microsegments are 16 bits or four hexadecimal nibbles. They are global microsegments and local microsegments. The global microsegments are those which start with the first nibble between 0 and D, the hexadecimal letter D. So, to make it again easy, if you take node number two and you want to allocate it a global ID within the network in order to 
identify him to create shortest path to it, you're going to go use a global ID. So the first nibble, I put it to zero, global. I keep the other nibbles to zero, except the last nibble in this example, I put it to two so that you can memorize, ah, this is the global ID to, know, to, to go to node number two. Once you have allocated a global ID to a node, you append this to each of the 32-bit block and you advertise them in ISIS. Very easy. Note number two, advertise in ISIS, hey, within the best effort block, the black box, I am note number two, and this is a slash 48. Within the low latency block, the red block, I am note number two, and I advertise this as a slash 48. You see that these advertisements are like basic IP for the last 30 years. Very straightforward. You also immediately understand why this design is a seamless deployment. If you are node number three and you are a very old IPv6 router from 25 years ago and you receive a packet that has a network program which starts with the best effort block followed by the global ID node number two, no problem, you will forward it easily because simply you do a longest match on this slash 48. This is classic IP like the last 30 years. Let's now allocate local microsegments. The local microsegment starts with E and F. So let's say that I am at node two and I have a VPN number nine, allocate the verb nine. Let's make it easy. I am going to allocate the local microsegment F local zero zero nine. I open this to my locator and so here is how I build my network program. I know that this VPN client, he wants to create an overlay, but he wants that within my underlay, within my domain, I transport it according to the low latency path. So what I do at node number two is that when I advertise the VPN routes in BGP, I will advertise the VPN routes of this client with an outer destination, with an indication to say, hey, you ingress PE number one. When you will receive packet that wants to come to my client VPN number nine, I want you to encapsulate the packet in an IPv6 outer header, and I want you to put that destination address in the header. And you see it there. The destination address is very easy to read. So do I have a pointer? Yes, here. So it's very easy to, uh, the pointer, doesn't work. Is it working? No, it's not working. Um, so let's read it together. What I advertise as note number two, I advertise, hey, if you want to use that, uh, to send packets to that client, send it with the low latency block. This is FD00008, low latency block. To whom? To me, global ID 0002. To do what? When I will receive it, F009 is an ID at me, which means decapsulate and forward to client number nine. You read it easily. The network program is read from le left to right. The block gives you the way of routing. The next segment tells you where to go. The next segment tells you how to decapsulate. Straightforward. It is extremely efficient from hardware viewpoint. If you look at it with an MPLS mentality, you could think that you need three lookups. When the packet comes to you, note number two, you would think, hmm, I first need to look the first 32 bits and say, ah, this packet came to me via low latency path. Then I look at the next thing, it says, ah, it comes to me, I am note number two. What should I do with it? A third lookup and I look at F009 and I know, ah, this is, I need to decap and send into the ver VPN number nine. Not at all. This is the power of SRV6 microsegments. Everything has been engineered on the basis of IP. What is the source of IP? 
longest match lookup in the data plane. And so we do the recognition at node number two of the whole behavior that needs to be applied with one single longest match in 64 bits. In one single longest match, we understand this is a packet that came to me according to the low latency path I need to decaps in VPN number table nine. This is intuitive and rich. Let me give you a few other examples. First, destination address. So if I am the egress PE, I advertise my VPN routes, and I have four different examples of what outer destination address I'm going to ask the ingress PEs to use when they encapsulate the packets that needs to come to me. The first example, I am telling the ingress PEs, use that destination address. FD000000, this is the black prefix. So it means best effort path. To go to where? To me, not number two. To do what? Decaps and lookup in VPN9. This is the basic VPN service, VPN over best effort. The second example is what we just reviewed together. It's a VPN service, but with underlay differentiation, you go via the low latency path. This is the first way to do traffic entering in the domain via the use of the flex algo differentiation. The third example, I am going to do underlay differentiation, not using the flex algo, but using source routing. What I am saying the ingress P is, is to use another destination address that says, according to the best effort path, I want you to first go to node number three, and then from there, I want the packet to follow the best effort path to me, and then I will decapsulate. You could, for example, use such a source routing when you want to avoid to use the shortest path that maybe is using a fiber that you don't trust. The fourth example is saying, hey, send the packet to me, but according to the low latency path to an intermediate node number three, where I want a firewall service number five to be applied on the inner packet, and then I want a low latency path to go to node number two, where I will decaps and send to the VPN site number nine. What did I realize with this fourth example? I have realized the creation of an overlay VPN service with underlay differentiation, the packet follows the low latency path, and I have inserted a VNF firewall service in my network behavior. I have combined it overlay creation, underlay differentiation, and service chaining with the same technology, IP. No longer need any additional complexity. You see through these examples that I have never used the full power of my other destination address. My other destination address can contain up to six macro instructions. In the most complex example, I used four macro instructions. Two macro instructions were left unused. When they are unused, you simply put all of the nibbles to zero, which means no operation end of the program. This solution provides ultra scale. It provides you 4 billion global IDs with only consuming 0.2% of the private space. It gives you 4 billion local micro instructions to build VPN, service chaining, etc. It gives you running summarization that is outperforming MPLS by a factor of 500 to 1,000. MPLS cannot support IP summarization. It needs to support to advertise all of the loopbacks as slash 32 or slash 128. So it has to convey host route. So it doesn't scale for your IGP. So it makes your IGP complex. You need to extend it with BGPLU. With SRV6 microsegment, you forget all of that complexity. You just use ISIS. For example, Rakuten deployment, 30,000 routers, only 500 routes in ISIS. No BGPLU, because it's the power of routing summarization. SRV6 microsegment provides you with the best compression efficiency 
The analysis is mathematical and is available on segmentrouting.net. It outperforms the next best alternative called GSIT by 60%. If more than six microsegments would be required, this is when you would use the segment routing extension header. In the segment routing extension header, every 128 bit segment brings you an additional six micro instructions. What is the status of the technology? Two years ago, we demonstrated line rate insertion of the outer destination header plus a segment routing extension header containing 428 bit segments. This a total of 30 micro instructions. So it means that while you see all of these examples today do not need the SRH, if you would find something that needs an SRH, the current technology already supports 30 micro instructions line rate. SRV6 micro segments allows you, as we quickly showed to, uh, the, this afternoon, to build anything, any combination of underlay, overlay, service chaining, security. It allows you to build it in any domain. We have deployed SRV6 micro segments in the access, the metro, the core, in the data center, on the host, and in the cloud. This is the sole technology that is giving you end-to-end -end stateless policy. Let me give you an example. If you do VXLAN in the data center, if you do MPLS in the rest of the network, at the data center border, you need to convert from VXLAN to MPLS. This is complex. Complexity means low scale. Complexity means high cost. Complexity means low robustness. With SRV6 micro segments, you have an end-to-end -end data plane solution. You remove that gateway function and that complexity at the data center border. As we've shown together, you have seamless deployment in Brownfield. It is because when we invented SRV6 micro segment, we did it on the basis of IP. We engineered it for IP, and so we hid the network program behind the classic longest match. And so legacy devices still work very well because they just forward the packet according the, to the longest match. The solution is standardized. It has a rich ecosystem and a rich open source. We have two operators, Dan Voyer Fellow at Bell Canada and Guillaume Mishra Fellow at Verizon, who have publicly recorded, and the presentations are available and the video are available on segmentrouting.net, to explain how microsegment is outperforming MPLS and how microsegment is outperforming VXLAN. This is the status of the ecosystem. We invented the SRV6 technology in 2016. We had committed to our lead operators to make a rich ecosystem. We are now very happy to see that all major vendors have joined the industry for micro segments. All merchant silicon support it. You see all of the open source application, all of the open source networking stacks on the right. Le, uh, on the right top corner, and you see that the major NIC and DPU providers are also part of the industry. It's fantastic. This is our other commitment to the operators. We promise to make it a standard. We work very hard, and my team is ed editor and co-author of 100% of the RFCs defining the SRV6 technology. We have started, we have invented this in 2016. We started to engineer it in 2017. We started to deploy it in 2019. At this time, we have 80,000 microsit routers deployed worldwide, supporting 200 million subscribers. Some of the flagship deployment, Alibaba, ultra-scale deployment across China involving vendor network operating system and Sonic, very interesting. And for example, Rakuten in Japan, 14,000 SRV6 microsegment routers deployed, supporting 70% of the services at Rakuten. But as well in Latin America, we have a great deployment uh, with Telefonica Vivo, 
And uh, I, I really advise you to look at this very good blog that has been written by Nelson, uh, published on the LACNIC blog, to explain why it is a no-brainer uh, the SRV6 macro segment is a far better solution than MPLS. The principle that guides my team's work is simplicity always prevails. Your industry, our industry, is about IP. Why do we need anything else than IP? We just need IP. We no longer need these shim layers, and this is what has driven all of this work. We thank all of the public deployments, our lead operators that you see on the bottom of the slide, for all of their help uh, building this technology. This is the MicroSit IPM event in Rome in 2023, last October. We invite you to the same event that we will do next October. In the, south of Euro, in, the, in the south of Europe, along the sea. It's a two-day event. More than 50% of the time is allocated to lead operators to share their design and experience so that the operators uh, can learn directly from their peers. And as you could see, we were over 100 people uh, in Rome. We expect uh, the same uh, type of attendance uh, next October uh, in the south of France. We have written the book, Segment Routing Part 3, dedicated to SRV6. I hope it is going to be helpful. Let us now focus on IP measurement, IPM. The nature of IP is ECMP. You see the topology of one of our lead operators, and you see that between two data centers, they have a lot of ECMP path. If we look at the mathematical analysis of this network, the percentile 90 involved 32 ECMP path. The problem is that legacy measurement solutions for IP networks are not scaled for this level of ECMP. The problem is that the legacy performance solution use CPU-driven techniques, and this is 1,000 to 10,000 times not performant enough. If you are not performant enough by a factor of 1,000 to 10,000, it means that what you observe, what you measure, is less than 0.1% of what you should observe. What does it mean? Let me give you an analogy because it is striking. Let's say that you are the security officer for this bank, and let's say that your cameras are not powerful enough to monitor all of the space around the bank. The cameras are 1,000 to 10,000 times not performant enough, which means they can only observe 0.1% of the space around the bank. Would you accept it? No. How come we accept this in IP networks? We need a drastic boost of performance. Is it by optimizing software to work on CPU? It will never work. You need to have 1,000 to 10,000 boosts of performance. So the solution is IPM. We integrated the probing right into the Silicon One technology. And it allows us to send probes at a range of 14 million probes per second and receive and collect data at 14 million probes inside per second. So we send 14 and we receive 14. And this is on top of all of the forwarding we do. So it doesn't cost you anything. This is on top of the normal forwarding capability of the silicon. Why do you need that performance? Very easy. The network is at the center of our economy. So you need to measure your service at least at the granularity of every millisecond. You need to measure your service to every destination. Likely 500 is a fair number. And we have seen that there are a lot of ECMP paths, so 16 is a fair number. So if you multiply this, this is 8 million probes per second. Any edge needs to send 8 million probes per second to measure all the other edges, to measure all of the ECMP path, and to have a measurement every millisecond. And this is exactly what we deliver with Silicon One. Actually, we deliver more, but that's good. You have a bit of buffer for future growth. We don't only improve the performance, we improve the richness. Because what do you hear from your clients? The clients 
discovered the problems on your network infrastructure before you. This is normal for two reasons. The first reason was the issue of performance. If your performance of your camera, of your measurement, is z less than 0.1% of what you would need, obviously you don't see what your clients see because they see 100%. But the second reason for why operators are blind is because legacy technology use very blind metrics. Min, max, average. Do you know a client who is calling himself the min client, the max client, the average client? These metrics means nothing. What we need is to measure the full experience of all of your clients. So what we did in Silicon One is that we digitalize the latency curve. We collect all of the latency measurements and we give you a digitalization of the latency curve. Let me give you an example. If from Buenos Aires to Rio, you have eight ECMP paths, seven are good, but one is bad, the average is not going to tell you anything. But if you look at the orange digitalization curve, which we're going to give you, you will see that 87% of your clients are using one of the seven good paths. Okay, they're good. The, but you will see the bump on the right where 12.5% of your clients are routed from Buenos Aires to Rio according to the bad path. And now you are aware of this. You can react to it because you have a full observability. The IPM technology allows you to build, to do measurement for any type of fabric, data center, core, access, metro, whatever you want, from any HP to any HQ along any ECMP path. Every probe we send at 14 million rates is going to measure absolute loss and one-way latency at an accuracy of 20 nanoseconds and liveness sub two milliseconds, and we do all of this by reusing standard technology stamp. You see that IPM is not only giving you full visibility by giving you a boost in performance by 1,000 to 10,000 times and much richer metric with the digitalization of the latency curve, but it is also drastically reducing the cost because the measurement is integrated into the silicon of the router. So you no longer need to buy appliance. You no longer need to buy ports to the appliance. You no longer need to pay for the power of the appliance. You no longer need to pay for the rack space of the appliance. The I in IPM means IP, IP performance measurement, but it also means integration. The first integration is in the silicon. The second integration is with routing analytics. We have built routing analytics, which we called RA, that is basically computing and storing the routed path from any P to any Q along any CMP path all the time, all the time. So it means that what you have from the IPM dashboard is that you have from any P, any edge, to any edge along any ECMP path, you have measurements and you have the routed path. So you can compare them. And this is a fantastic boost into AI because you have correlated data between measurement and routing. And you can do troubleshooting and root cause failure because we store this over time. As always, we want you to benefit from the new technology for a brownfield network. We know that you are not going to deploy Silicon One all over the network in one shot. So one of the techniques we have is inference in routing analytics. If, for example, you have deployed Silicon One IPM in Paris to Madrid, and there your measurements is detecting a problem on one ECMP path from Paris to Madrid, Routing analytics is going to discover that legacy brownfield nodes, London to Lisbon and Brussels to Sevilla, will also experience the same problem because it infers it from the routing. This is one of the techniques we use to give you the power of IPM in a brownfield network. We have other techniques that I don't talk about publicly now, but if you're interested in private conversation, we will 
explain you how it works. As always, we work closely with operators. In Paris, uh, a month ago, uh, four operators described the experience with microsegment and IPM technology. These presentations are recorded uh, as video. They are available on segmentwriting.net. You have the links there. And I really encourage you to listen, to watch this video. Mike Valentine, fellow at Goldman Sachs. Bart Janssen's cold, fantastic deployment uh, uh, with the cold team. Uh, Verizon, Gian Mashra on the uh, specific application to data, to data center. And then Eddie Juan from Alibaba, ultra-scale deployment in China, vendor network operating system, and Sonic deployment, very interesting. We are in the IP industry. We don't need anything else than IP to support that industry. IP is better than ever. You use SRV6 macro segment to build anything end-to-end, -end, and you use IPM to measure any service. Many thanks on time. Alguna pregunta para nuestro speaker? Thank you for your... Any questions? Any questions online? None? Okay, well, thank you very much to our speaker.